الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, welcome back to Iftar with myself. I am your brother Imran, alhamdulillah. And inshallah, today we're going to discuss uh, a topic that some sisters have requested that we bring to light. And that is the topic of if it's better for women to go and pray Salat of Taraweeh in the Masjid, or as we say in my culture, Taravi, Taraviya. Is it better for a girl to pray Taravi in the Masjid, or is it better to pray at home? Okay, the reason they're saying this is because we know that generally speaking for the, for, the, for, the, for the women, it's better for them to pray in their houses. So to get an understanding of the answer to this question, let us go to the evidences themselves and then we'll get a bit of an organic understanding. Okay, well the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said in this hadith is found in Sunan Abi Dawood, narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma, where the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, لا تمنعوا نساءكم لا تمنعوا نساءكم المساجد. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, do not prevent the woman from going to the masjid. Ah, what do we learn here? If a woman wants to go, she shouldn't be prevented. She should not be stopped from going to the masjid. But then the Prophet said, وَبُيُوتَهُنَّ خَيْرٌ لَهُمْ But then straight away he said, but then for her to pray inside of her house is better for her than for her to pray in the masjid. So what do we learn from here? We learn that you shouldn't stop her from going to the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ clearly said this. But at the same time, she should know that it's better for her to pray in her house. In another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, and this hadith is found in Sunnah Abi Dawood, the Prophet ﷺ, he further emphasized on this. He mentioned, Salatu al-mar'ati fi baytiha aftaru min salatiha fi hujratiha. The Prophet ﷺ said, for a woman to pray inside of her house is better for her than for her to pray inside of her courtyard. So the more in her house she is, the better. She's got the house and she's got the courtyard. It's better for her to pray inside the house than it is for her to pray in the courtyard. And then he said, وَصَلَاتُهَا فِي مَخْدَعِهَا أَفْضَلُ مِن صَلَاتِهَا فِي بَيْتِهَا The Prophet ﷺ said, but then for her to pray inside of her, her chamber, her private quarter, that little corner inside of her bedroom, that private section for her, that is better than for her to pray in the other parts of the house. So you have her courtyard, and then you have that, it's better for her to pray inside the actual house. But then even within the house, it's even better the more deeper and secluded and private and hidden she is inside of her house. So, brothers and sisters, what we learn from here is that a woman, she can pray in the masjid. She can, no problem. But it's better for her that she prays inside of her house. Now, bef before we discuss whether this changes in the month of Ramadan or not, I want to answer a question that maybe some of you have probably you know, brought up to your mind. And that is why? Why is it better for a woman to pray in a house than to pray in a masjid? Well, you see, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honoured the women in Islam. He's honoured them and He wants to protect their honour. For a woman to be out on the streets, out and about at night where she might get attacked, where a guy might pick her up and you know, look at her and maybe even, you know, start talking to her and end up getting into a haram relationship because you don't get into haram relationships inside your house, do you? Haram relationships, you get into them outside of your house. You meet a guy, you see, yeah, what happens outside, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to prevent you from having your virginity taken away from you by you falling into intercourse with another man. Allah wants to protect you from your heart being broken, getting played by a guy. How many sisters have their hearts broken on a regular basis? Just get played by guys. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to protect your honor. So, you know, you are a queen, you're righteous, you're, you're pure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want some random guy to be watching you, looking at you. If you know what men are like, sisters, wallahi, you'll be shocked, you'll run a mile away from any man ever seeing you. You know, men, they, they literally strip a woman naked with, with their own eyes. They did researches and experiments to see how men react when it comes to women who have their beauty exposed, okay? And the way that they react psychologically, the way that their mind reacts up here cognitively towards a woman who has her beauty exposed is the exact same way that the man would react towards a piece of meat. Like if you place a steak before him and you place a beautiful woman in front of him, his mind is treating this woman as if she was his piece of meat. Actually, psychologically, he sees her like that. And that's why he has no respect for her. He treats the woman the same, like, you know that saying, 
you know, don't treat me like a piece of meat. It's true. The man actually treats the woman like a piece of meat. And a piece of meat, you have no regard for it. After you eat, you throw it away. You have your peace with it, you throw it away. And that's how some men are with women. They have their way with them, then they throw them away. You don't treat her like a human being. But the way to treat for you to be treated like a human being is for that beauty to be hidden. For a man to not be able to, you know, think of you like that. And it's true. Some, you know, feminists will probably come up and be like, no, you know, the men have to lower their gaze. It, it's true, the men have to lower their gaze. Allah told them to lower their gaze. In fact, Allah told them in Surah al for the men to lower their gaze before He told the women. The ayah before, right? We're not denying that. But at the same time, it works both ways. No matter how thin you slice the bread, the bread will always have two sides. No matter how many, you know, it always takes two to tango, as they say, right? At the end of the day, you know, a man, I don't want to go into this too deep, but the point is that the Sharia is trying to benefit you, it's trying to protect you. Look at how many sisters get the hijabs pulled off in the streets. Look at how many sisters get the niqabs pulled off in the streets. Well, it's, it's a dangerous society, dangerous environment. So all of this in consideration, the Sharia is telling you it's better for you to pray in the house. Even then, it didn't say that you have to pray in the house. No, you can pray outside the house. You can go into the masjid and pray. It's just telling you this is better for you. And if you think about it, wallahi, yeah, uh, you know the Queen of England, you know, you can't just run up to her, you can't just look at her, you can't even touch her. Do you, I, many people don't know, but it's actually a crime to touch the queen. If you touch the queen, you could be criminally prosecuted for touching the queen. Okay? So I'm saying, look at that. She's, she, she's a kafirah. But look at how much honor and respect that they give to their queen. You can't even touch her. So I'm saying, if you can't touch her, then what about all of you? Or if, 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 if she has been given the rank of a queen and respected as a queen to the point where she can't be touched, then that means all of you Muslim women are queens. Because Allah didn't give no man the right to touch you except for your husband. And of course, you know, you can be hugged by your father and your brothers can hug you and whatnot, but you get the point. What I mean what I mean in the context I'm talking about, your husband can touch you like that. So all of your queens then, no man has the right to touch you. Furthermore, the Sharia took it one step forward. Not only can they not touch you, they can't even look at you. They don't mind you looking at the queen. They just say you can't touch her. Allah says, no, I'm elevating these women even higher than your queens. Not only is it that all of them can't be touched, all of them can't even be looked at. So why like Allah is honoring you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is honoring you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting you, giving you status. If this is for them a status of a queen, then you have a status higher than a queen. Huh? Every Muslim woman has got a status higher than a queen. Alhamdulillah. But even then, if you want to, you can go to the masjid. Okay, you can go to the masjid. It is not haram for you. The question comes to mind now, what is better? Is it better for her to pray taraweeh in the month of Ramadan? We know generally speaking, outside of Ramadan, it's always better to pray in the house. But in the month of Ramadan, does it change? Is it suddenly now better for her to go pray taraweeh in the month of Ramadan? Does Ramadan have some kind of an exclusive special ruling? No, it doesn't. Because the hadith was general. The Prophet left it unrestricted. He unrestrictedly and generally encompassing all times mentioned that it is better for a woman to pray in a house as opposed to going outside. For you to say taraweeh in the month of Ramadan would, would, would be different. You need some kind of an external evidence to suggest that it's better for her to go pray taraweeh in a masjid which we do not have. So if the woman, she wants to go pray taraweeh in the masjid, it would still be better for her to go home. But if she feels like by me being at home, I'm not going to do much worship, my iman is going to decrease, my iman is going to go low, I know I'll have more khushul in the salah when I go to the taraweeh in the masjid. And if I go out, there will not be much fitter, there will not be much fasad. For example, she's going to go with her mahram, her mahram is going to take her. Her husband, her father, her brother is going to take her in the car, go to the message, she's going to go into the message, she's going to come right back, she's going to go to the message with the mahram, the mahram is going to take her to the door, only time her mahram, her husband, her father, her brother is going to part with her is when she goes to the door, when she comes back out, he's going to take her back, he's going to bring her back, she's going to be safe, she's going to be protected, she won't be attacked, then it can change and it can be, inshallah ta'ala, maybe, you know, uh, it can be acceptable, it can be good for her to go to the masjid, but you have to weigh each situation on its merits. But if the sister's going to go out and she's going to be dressed, you know, wearing perfume and makeup, she's going to the masjid like that. And she's going to be loud in the way and attra attracting, you know, attention towards her. And she might be attacked, she might be dangerous. Then it would be better for her to even in this situation pray at home. So the point is, generally speaking, it's better to pray at home. But, you know, it can depend, you know, it can be good for you to go to the masjid if it's going to be worse for you when you're praying at home. Uh, you want khushu, your iman will be low. But then again, you have to make sure that you... You, 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 you decrease all other harms. But if those harms are going to be greater, 
then you just prepare it to pray at home, inshallah ta'ala. So I hope that answers the question, Be'ithin Dari Kareem. Once again, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite you guys to our Muslim Survival Guide. We have an online program designed for non-practicing people where you can study your religion primarily, okay? Uh, this month we've been focusing on Ramadan We've got a course called Fasting and Furious To help you guys really understand the true spirit of Ramadan People who are on there really benefit and really loved it And they're saying it's really changing their Ramadan Walhamdulillah Brothers and sisters We also just released a course on the Tafsir of Surah Al-Fatiha Which is a surah that you cite every day in, the Quran, in your Salah At least 17 times a day you recite it And Ramadan is a month of Quran We have a link with the Quran What better way to link with the Quran Than through the most important surah in the entire Quran Surah Al-Fatiha So if you go to the link below Hopefully you can register Hopefully you can benefit bi al-Kareem With that said I have to love you and leave you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh